So with this shoe here, this is as this was a last. This picture here was a last page spread, which means that it's the most detailed. So this is where we're going to get uh, the most detailed information. Um, because here it's just like like every other picture. So here we got a good, nice, good close up of the cylinder, and this is what it looks like from the back. So yeah, it's it's as if it's a cylinder, but with the folds are very great. You know, that's what it would look like if it was just by itself. But these folds, you got this. So you got that cylinder shape, but now he's folded. Um, he's added. <sighs> There's a point here, so it goes up like that. It cuts sharply here, and then on this line here, and then adds this, like it flicks this way, then back around. So flick and back around, and then acts this line here goes. It's pretending like it's going through, like. I'm just drawing this line to show you where it would probably look if this shoe was if this shoe was transparent. That line would probably go back here. So they've put it here, and then they've added so less flickies on this side, just one flick, and then this line travels through and peaks over right here. You see that? See that little peak? So good. And then the shoe kind of protrudes out of that sock right here. So it's like, the sock's all like, yeah, 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 we got you. And then the shoe's like, comes right out there. That is a very well, that is the most detailed shoe. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Now... <laughs> Where do I even begin, man? Alright, so we have the, the buckle here. The buckle is actually looking pretty pretty ordinary. The buckle gets its beveled, which means um, slightly. Instead of it being like that, where it's there's a definite uh, drop there, beveled just means flatter, so it would be like that. That's a terrible example, but that one's got some more detail. You still know that there's this like bit of depth here, but it's less obvious than this thing here. So this buckle gets its beveled details from the colorist who, you know, adds these lines here, you know, a little detail here, just, just to add that bevel. But so if the artist just draws the square like that. Now this, the sole of his shoe, now notice a few things. So we got like the basic line of the sole, okay, where it separates the red from the gray. And then you have, I'll make it more pronounced, but with this shoe, it, it sticks out like this. So it's like the sole of the shoe is its own entity, okay? It's not just like, it's not like it's some punk line. So pretend that this part of the sole doesn't exist. The sole isn't just this line that goes like that. You know, it's not some basic line. It's its own. It's got shape. It's got magnitude. Okay, it's not just this simple line. So when I used to draw shoes, I would be like, when I used to draw Sonic shoes, I would just add this line here. And I was like, all right, that's the sole of his shoe. Yeah, woohoo. But this, when done in detail, you know, it's like moves around. It comes out from the, the tip of the shoe here and then goes around. And now this is interesting. This is seldom done uh, in the drawings of shoes because, as you can see here, there's, you know, there's not these, these lines going on. There are these... Uh, I don't know what to call them, like little breaks in the in the sole of the shoe. This particular one here that we're looking at, this massive bend, is actually this part right here. 
So, we'll get to the bottom of the shoe later. This, the bottom of the shoe is so awesome. We'll get to that later. Okay, so that's why there's a massive little bend there. And then you have these little bends here, which are representative of these little, th these little guys. These little fellas. Alright. Now, the back of the shoe has these, like a, just a bit of a dip in the, um, a dip in the, I guess, back of the sole of the shoe. Yeah, so this dip is, if you, I guess it's, it's easy to understand here. The dip pretty much looks like that, and it's just, if you colored it in, it's just like a dark spot of this of the back of the shoe. But when drawn on the side like this, you can see that this this part that I'm coloring in now is the deepest part of the sole, and that the sole has thickness around his shoe. So everything here, in all of this in the sole, is this thick, which is. Which is pretty much what this this little part here does. It makes everything in the sole seem like it's thicker. So, yeah, you you can you can do that with this angle because the side of the shoe is open. Like there's no um, it doesn't go like that. So, which would be a little harder to figure out where the line where like the the line should go. Um, to make it look like it's it's deep but because it's there's this open section here that's exposed to the world you know it's not shut with the shoe so to speak um, the artist does this really cool thing where he like pulls it pulls it in like that and so it's like this this really nice section like that perspective remember I drew that buckle before and I showed that it was like you know deep like that that's what this is doing. It's the same same deal, and it looks awesome. All right, so that's pretty much his shoe. His shoe also the top of his shoe, I should say. Uh, his shoe. How does it work? Do I have a picture? This is a this is a pretty good picture. So it's kind of like these two pieces like that and just think of yeah just think of it like a two-piece thing I kind of broke down um, a picture that Tracy Yardley did and I was when I was deconstructing the anatomy and so I gave a rule where that's pretty much exactly what you do with the shoes you break it down into two parts and that's the most effective way to do things because then it shows you which way the shoe sh like should be uh, position facing so if you didn't have the two-step rule and you were just trying to draw this picture to the side you might draw it like that and then like that so on top of it you might draw the shoe actually yeah you might draw it like that and you might draw it like that See what I mean? So if you had the cufflinks in here, and you drew, and you imagined where the, it just it would look silly. Uh, well, it wouldn't look silly. It just wouldn't look as nice. So even if you put in those extra bits here, you can you can kind of understand how the feet should be going. But in here, there's a lot more detail. See the the shoe kind of starts here and then curves up here. And then it starts here and then curves down here. Which gives it that cartoony, free-flowing, not just a stick, standing still, professional artist vibe. Which is good. So you can see it here. Cuts in half and then... It's almost like a... Uh, you could almost... You could draw that same shoe by going this way, you know? But it's the second. It's the second half that can be maneuvered. 
the most because it's it's like if you look at your foot right now and you flex it up and down and up and down you know just the toes you could you could say that this part here is representative of the toes you can move it up and down or you know to the side pivot it add it cut make it more cartoony okay that's as far as I'm gonna go for that uh, the mouth no I gotta do a separate video for that that's gonna take too long the shoe pretty much the shoe is best way I can explain it with these two pictures here is you have the the bottom uh, the sole right here and then the oh sorry the the back of the foot and then the front of the foot so the back of the foot like that and then the front of the foot okay that's step one now what you need to remember is to add this little gap here because this little gap is where the arch of the foot is that's what this little part is representative of which is kind of like um, if this is the shoe the arch is almost like that the thing that separates both parts of the foot so part one and part two and you have this that's like representative of arch so it's like part one part two and then this is the arch and it kind of curves up like that okay so that's kind of breaking down the anatomy that might be a little too too advanced um, that's fine because what makes this so difficult is obviously the detail on these shoes man but they look so good so what I do is when I draw them I'll use this one as an example do you have a better one yeah I'll use this one this one's the easiest to understand Okay, so you got these squares here. Wait, so actually what I do is, so I break it down like that first. Then I add these like horseshoe shapes. So if I was drawing it here, if I can get the shoe shape right. All right, that, we'll just do that for basics. The basics in this shape sake. Okay. I'd add the horseshoe and two squares. Make sure there's the separation here. That's so important. And then add the squares here. Actually, well, that should be like that. So, so this line here is connected to the square and the sole. Same with this side. And then add another square here, and then another horse shoe shape. Okay. And then what you'll do is, oh, that's pretty much the basic shape there. Um, and then you have this, like, these lines I'm drawing now is pretty much the depth, the thickness of the shoe and I'm drawing it very basically but just so you can understand because from this shape here that will really help you to understand um, what that detail should look like there for the moment I'm just gonna say just focus on understanding this shape and in your own time look at the bottom of the shoes and try and understand how it works and then I'll make a separate video on how to draw the bottom of his shoe or just bottom of shoes Okay, we've already done one on hands, so we don't need to undo that. Eyes. I think we'll finish it up on eyes. Alright, so you have this. It's very interesting and tricky to get shape because it's not a circle like this, and it's not eyes like that. This is shadow. I don't know what this is. This is more like female character. You have an in-between, which means that what I do is I'll start with a shadow shape, but it's too it's too much. So you need to round it out. So what I try and do is you can almost get away with drawing shadow eyes and then round it off at the edges. You know, really, really simply. 
that the thing is though it's it varies so here it's very obvious if you did shadow eyes here it just wouldn't work oh and also one other quick thing with the eyes is it's got that same tr triangle shape that we do with the everything <laughs> okay so just remember that so um what i like to do is draw draw the eye like that and then see that little curve there I spent ages just trying to draw that So even then, it, it still doesn't look effective, so then you kind of have to mold it yourself. But that's pretty much the best way I can explain it. <laughs> Don't ever draw a muzzle like that. Okay. So yeah, we got that, see that subtle, you could almost break it down like that. That, that triangle shape. So just remember those triangle shapes. Um, and what also one thing I'd recommend is drawing over the top of these type of pictures because then you can you can understand what it felt like to to draw that shape and um, and then also look at the the eye shape. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. But that's a that's a start, okay? You start with that, and then you can, and then you can just do the old Control T routine, and you know, get it to look exactly how you want it to. <laughs> but that's bad. Don't don't do that all the time, but only when necessary. All right. So that's, yep. So same same rule applies. You could go through all of these and see that it's uh, in many forms just the same thing there is one picture here right here where they kind of change it it's no longer his eyes are like um that there wh what i do is when you have the face um draw like the eyes like this and then later on if you want to like change the expression add the lines in that you want to add in so let's say you want it to look a little sad you know you put those lines in and then um, just embellish this part a little bit so bring it up a little more maybe and then you can see That he looks sad. So that's a little technique to why these eyes look different and how to do it. But I'll probably make a separate video for that as well. Okay. That's pretty much it. Alright, so. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll try and make more in the future. And check out the um, anatomy tutorial I did. Because that pretty much breaks down the anatomy of Sonic. But this was just to like look at all the nitty gritties. And to try and figure them out a little bit. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Have a good day.